Mr. Black. This is Beyond Creepy, and in this episode, I'm going to be discussing the Sandman entity. In the April-June 1972 issue of Gemini Magazine, there is an interesting case involving a man named Reg Chapman. It's a three-page article, most of which was culled from a 1971 interview Chapman did with the magazine. He is described as a middle-aged man with a rather large family. His pleasant demeanor was such that it made anyone speaking to him feel, quote, at home. Chapman's experiences spanned several hours and involved encounters with apparent non-human entities. He wasn't able to pin down an exact date, though he was able to determine that it happened around 1959. He requested that Gemini not print the more personal aspects of his encounter, though the magazine was hopeful that they would be able to publish it in full at some later date. Though since Gemini closed up shop in 1972, it seems their wish was never fulfilled. That said, I thought it would be interesting to look at Red Chapman's encounter, known in UFO circles as the Winter Hill Case. In his desire for some peace and quiet, family man Reg Chapman had made a habit of traveling out to the moorlands of Winter Hill, near Bolton in the afternoons. There he would sit and relax, take in the sights and the fresh air. One day his tranquil routine was interrupted by the appearance of a figure. He had been seated in his usual perch, peering out over the nearly deserted countryside when he looked up and saw something that surprised him. Seemingly from nowhere, a being Chapman described as having a, quote, majestic aura, appeared in front of him. It reminded Chapman of the Zorro-like figure that appeared in the Sandman's port wine advertisements. He was dressed all in black, with a long black cape, and wearing a Spanish-type hat, one with a white brim. Chapman suddenly began to hear words in his mind. He noted that the figure was speaking, though his lips were not moving. He recognized that this was some type of telepathic communication, though he had no idea how it could be possible. They conversed for some period of time. When asked by the magazine to go into detail about what was discussed, Chapman either refused or grew vague, indicating that it was of a very personal nature. Further, he would not elaborate on what happened following the initial conversation. It is unclear if Chapman saw the being depart or if anything else occurred. And again, whatever was revealed, the magazine agreed not to disclose it. In the hours afterwards, Chapman began to sense that something else was going to happen. So he eventually returned to the same spot on Winter Hill. He had no idea what would occur though he anticipated a possible second visit, and it seems that this is what would eventually play out. While standing at the spot, Chapman suddenly became aware of an object, quote, about the length of a cricket pitch away. He recalled that the craft was shaped like a horseshoe and was hovering just above ground level. Something he presumed to be a door suddenly slid back. A figure appeared in said doorway. He was similar in appearance and was dressed in the same attire as the earlier visitor. Black hair, black beard, dark eyes, and very pale skin, quote, like a rabbi in the streets of Manchester. This figure also exuded strength, the same vibes he got from the earlier figure. For a second time, a telepathic communication ensued. It lasted several minutes, and again, it was of a very personal nature. When returning to the craft, the entity did not turn its back on Chapman, but rather glided backwards like the projection of an image from somewhere else, receding and gradually getting smaller. When asked by Gemini to describe the craft, Chapman recalled that it was, quote, large. Apparently he spent some time looking into the UFO subject as he indicated that it was, quote, larger than an Adamski scout craft. It seems he was referring to Polish-American author and contactee George Adamski, 
who in the 1940s and 50s came forward with a series of photographs of UFOs and tales of being regularly visited by extraterrestrials. According to Chapman, as the aperture closed and the object began to move, a gaseous vapor appeared but did not seem to be connected with the object's propulsion. It made a sort of half-circle movement around Chapman and whoosh, it was gone, leaving only a small curl of vapor and an astonished man behind. Chapman's case is interesting for me as the being or being's description was that of a pale, dark-eyed man wearing a black cape and a black Spanish or Zorro-like hat. It most reminded him of the Don character logo from Sandman's Port Wine, designed in 1928 by George Massey at Brown. The dramatic dark figure in Spanish hat and cape has become an iconic figure to wine lovers around the world. To me, it almost sounds like Chapman's describing a hat man, an ethereal type entity most commonly associated with sleep paralysis and late night bedroom invaders. Further, the entities that Chapman encountered seem somewhat harmless, where the Hatman is often described as malevolent and sinister. Chapman's desire to return to the spot later in the day suggests a level of comfort with the situation. Most ET encounters involve the witnesses feeling a great deal of fear and trauma. Some won't venture anywhere near the location of the sighting for weeks. Some are inclined not to leave their house at all. But with Chapman, it seems he almost welcomed their return. On the other hand, Chapman indicated that a telepathic communication had occurred, so it's entirely possible that he was being manipulated, not only to return to the spot later, but with regards to his feelings on the experience as a whole. Some early Men in Black encounters also described these Zorro-type entities, pale, vampire-like, dark-eyed men dressed in black suits sometimes wearing wide brim hats and even occasionally capes. In his book, Casebook of the Men in Black, the late author and researcher Jim Keith detailed accounts involving sightings of shadowy black caped individuals riding horseback, often through disaster strewn areas as far back as the 1300s. In 1962 in San Francisco, California, a young girl claims that she had a very frightening encounter with a pair of these Sandman or Zorro type entities. In 1997, the late Art Bell received a call from a 41 year old Napa Valley woman named Roxanne. Her last name was not disclosed. She described how in 1962, at the age of six, she was living with her English mother, her father, and her sister in a two story Dutch colonial house in San Francisco. One late afternoon, Roxanne and her sister, Denise, who was three years older than her, were playing in the backyard. Roxanne had a favorite tree in the yard that she enjoyed climbing. It allowed her a place to relax and get lost in her thoughts. Her sister had wandered off to pick flowers while Roxanne swung in the tree. She admits that she wasn't really paying attention to anything, just sort of goofing around. She then heard the faint voice of her mother from the patio calling them inside for supper. Roxanne climbed down from the tree and crossed the yard. She told her mother that she would go and fetch Denise. That is when she realized that she was no longer in the backyard. Roxanne assumed that she had hopped the fence again. On the other side of the fence was a house, and beside that an empty lot which was overgrown with tall grass. Their mother absolutely forbid them from going over the fence, but they tended to do it from time to time. Roxanne assumed that Denise must have been up to something naughty. She decided to look over and see what she was doing. When I jumped up on the fence, I was standing on a 2 by 4 stretching with all my might to see over, to see if she had gone over there. Roxanne suddenly found herself confronted by something truly bizarre, something that horrified her. My sister was lying down and two men were there. One was bent all the way down on his knees and my sister's head was limp in his lap. My sister was laying down and she was not conscious. She was not awake. And the other man was bent down over her with a syringe. The man had a syringe and he held it to my sister's arm. And I was literally shocked into silence at first because I could not believe what I was seeing because of the way they were dressed. They were dressed in black pants. 
these men weren't wearing black jackets, they were wearing black capes. They wore capes and Zorro type hats, which I later learned when I got older, I saw Zorro. Now when he was about to give her the injection, I screamed her name as loud as I could. And then I thought I better go get my mother because they wouldn't leave her alone. I was screaming, I go, leave my sister alone. And then I started crying and I slipped off the bench and I got the million slivers in my palm, which I didn't even feel at the time. And I started running for my mother and I fell down in the flower bed, this brick flower bed that we had. And then my instincts told me to save my sister. My instincts told me I didn't have time to get my mother. And then I jumped up on that fence, never been able to get that high before, but the men were gone. At that point, her sister began to wake up. Roxanne admitted to Belle that she was absolutely freaking out, asking Denise who the men were and what they were doing to her. Denise had no idea what she was talking about. Roxanne told her of the two men with the syringe, though Denise seemed to dismiss it as childish nonsense. Eventually, she made her way to the fence and climbed over. Roxanne noted that she seemed out of it. She was groggy, very tired, as if she had just woken up. Not wanting to frighten her parents, Roxanne opted to not tell anyone of what she saw, though she never forgot it. Certainly, Roxanne's encounter with these Sandaman or Zoro-type characters is much more frightening than Chapman's. It is unclear why these men were attempting to inject Denise. And was Denise herself an experiencer? Had Denise been drawn over the fence by an unknown force, only to encounter something not of this world? And had Roxanne stumbled upon these two Zoro-type figures in the process of covering this up? Was the syringe filled with something that would make Denise forget? Not the first time something like this has been reported with regards to the Men in Black. From Uform, a man named Terry W. also claims to have observed these entities. He had several notable encounters throughout his life beginning in 1968 when he was six years old, the same age as Roxanne when he awoke to the presence of six to seven beings standing in his room, asking him to come with them, which he vehemently declined. I don't like the looks of you, he recalled telling them. His experiences culminated in 1990 when he was living in Mayland, Australia. He claims that one evening several tall, quote, people in black capes entered his room and took him away. Albert Rosales, author of the Humanoid Journals, admits that he's not aware of too many reports involving these Sandaman or Zorro type entities. So these encounters I'm discussing here are a rarity, at least in regards to the UFO topic. What these entities are and where they come from remains a mystery, though with this video I'm hoping other people will come forward with their own encounters.